Welcome back to Red Dwarf News. I'm your host, Claire Bridgewater. After what feels like years in stasis, we are back to bring you all the latest Red Dwarf News. First up, yesterday was Red Dwarf's 33rd anniversary. I hope you all join me in cracking open a leopard lager, a prawn vindaloo, and enjoying a nice Red Dwarf marathon. Last weekend, over 400 fans gathered for Hollyhop 2021, the first ever online Red Dwarf convention. Organized by the official Red Dwarf fan club, and packed Phil with games, guests, quizzes, and surprises, the team delivered an event that was every bit as special and exhilarating as one of their usual dimension jumps. A highlight of the event was a reading of Into the Gloop, Rob Grant's first original Red Dwarf script since 1993, and it's safe to say that there was more than a little excitement for this. Featuring Loa Bacharel as Rimmer, Ralph Clarkson as Lister, Nicholas Skalova as the Cat, and Ellie Griffiths as Crichton, the story picks up right after the events of Out of Time and offers an alternative resolution to the Series 6 cliffhanger. It was gripping, funny, and exceptionally well-performed by the cast of fans. Also in the last week, Red Dwarf was in the news, but not for positive reasons. A lot of news outlets are making claims that due to a legal battle between the show creators, Doug Naylor and Rob Grant, that the future of the show has been put in jeopardy. Well, thanks to the Hollyhop event, we got told that this story is rubbish, and by Rob Grant himself. Rob says that he wants the show to continue forever in as many forms as possible, and he hopes to write some of it. Paul Jackson also backed this up by revealing all necessary contracts have been signed to allow another series or special to happen with Doug at the helm. So it looks the future of Red Dwarf is brighter than ever before. In other news, it was revealed on Twitter that production has just wrapped on Sound Asleep, an upcoming short comedy film starring our very own Danny John Jules. It's a quirky, unusual film in that it has only one actor and no dialogue. It's a silent film all about sound. Danny plays a washed-up, self-help writer who can't help himself. He's an insomniac and a control freak, and over the course of one night, he must do battle with all those noises that keep him awake. Tonight, one way or another, he will rest in peace. Danny was a joy to work with and a true professional. He brought so much more to the role than I could have imagined, from his big physical movements to his amazing expressive eyes. He really threw himself into the character in every single take, with huge passion, from the first shot to the last one. The film is almost finished, and you can follow Nadav Films on Twitter and Facebook to hear about any upcoming screenings and festival appearances later in the year. On to Chris Barry, who has recorded an audiobook for Stephen Llewellyn's epic sci-fi novel, Dinosaur. Chris described the book as follows. It is lots of spaceship stuff, loads of dinos you don't want to mess with, a range of interesting characters, a great story, and some Bond-style villains you also don't want to mess with. Perfect lockdown listening, really. Dinosaur, read by Chris Berry, is published by Fossil Rock and available on CD or download now. In yet more Chris news, this month also marks 30 years since the broadcast of the first episode of the British Empire. Two nights ago, Chris joined the cast for an online reunion featuring Harriet Thorpe, Tim Marriott, Russell Porter, Jill Greenacre, Mike Burns, Andre Bernard, Julia St. John, and John Kerrigan. The show was organized by MCON and featured scene readings, cast reminiscences, and a live Q&A. MCON has been very gracious with sharing their show recordings on their social media channels over the last few months. So if you missed this, we'd recommend keeping an eye on their Facebook and Twitter pages and crossing your fingers that this trend continues. The penultimate piece of news won't come as much of a surprise to many of you, but it's nonetheless impressive to see it all confirmed. UK TV has announced their audience data for the year, and it's good news for Red Dwarf. With both The Promised Land and the first three million years making it into their top five most watched programs of 2020, and with The Promised Land pulling in the largest audience on Dave for the last seven years. Well, that's all for this week. This has been your host, Claire Bridgewater. From all us schmegheads at Red Dwarf TV to all you schmegheads out there, smoke me a kipper. We'll be back for breakfast.